Okay. Okay. Do the head. Do the I'm not doing that head. I wanted to give you a quick room tour. Like How do I do this? This is a Roman lighthouse right in front of us here. How neat is that? Okay, so just got here. It's like right around sunrise. Got like the white cliffs of Dover over here. I'm at St. Margaret's Beach and it's 90p per hour to park so we're gonna do that real quick Alrighty, how do i do this okay that is quite lovely Okay guys, travelers, so we have now done sunrise in Dover, or at least I have, a list left in, but you know, that's her miss. But you know, I loved it, it was awesome, um, you know, the colors weren't quite there, but you could get some cool long exposure shots, um, very much worth waking up, I'm glad I did it. Let's uh, head back to the hotel, meet up with Liz, and get on with our day, let's go. Hey travelers, we're about to check out of our hotel here in Dover and wanted to give you a quick room tour. It's slightly messy because we are checking out and I'm checking in, but it's such a beautiful room that it would be a shame not to show you guys. So I'm standing here at the front entrance and it has an ensuite bathroom over here. Very clean, very pristine, has Dove branded toiletries, which was cool. And um, they gave us a hair dryer saying that they sanitized them all and asked if we needed one. And then if you walk in here, and there's little hooks on here for like coats or towels or whatever. If you walk in here, there's like teas and coffees and hot chocolates. We already made our coffee for the morning. And then over here is like a couch and sitting area and closet rack with a lot of hangers back here. And then a really cool antique writing desk. That was one of our favorite pieces in the room. And then this awesome four poster bed and curtains with tons of light. And I'm loving this armoire as well behind Derek. So beautiful. So. We this just is, thought... Yeah, and this is the Clementine room, so they have each room has a different kind of name. So if you are looking to book and you fell in love with this bed or something, Clementine. So this is the Churchill Guest House here in Dover. And we've really enjoyed our stay. We've only been here one night, but would totally stay longer if we could. Um, and it has a really pretty view of Dover as well out, out the window. So yeah, just wanted to show you guys um, a room that we are very pleased with here during the pandemic. Everything's sanitary and still has lots of character. All right, cheers. driven into a castle. This place is huge. It's awesome. I'm oh, so excited. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the views Glad from here. walk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, English Heritage membership, baby. Worth getting. One thing about traveling in the UK, if you're going to be here for any amount of time and there's a lot of like castles and other things you want to see, you want to look into getting memberships to English Heritage, which gives you free access and parking to a bunch of these places, including Dover Castle. Typically this would have cost like £17 per person to get up here. Um, and you get the car park privileges, which is pretty awesome. Okay guys, so we just got to Dover Castle here in Dover and we are gonna go get our maps and all that good stuff so we know what we're actually looking at. So let's do it. Is that it's from the first century AD. 
You can see here they have a telescope because way in that distance on the horizon, I mean, you can see it, it's a really clear day. That's France, folks. Bonjour. <laughs> lunch so we have a sausage roll and a beef pasty and we're gonna split them and I have a mocha dare cut coffee and because we spent more than 10 pounds they gave us 25% off our next cafe experience at the next English heritage place which we will definitely be using before it expires in January since we're traveling all around England so that was really nice added bonus the site of Dover Castle has an incredible history stretching back before the Roman invasion of Britain when it likely housed an Iron Age fortification. The Romans left their mark in the form of a lighthouse that Liz pointed out earlier, which claims to be the oldest standing building in Britain and one of only three existing Roman lighthouses left in the world. <laughs> it's so much uh, warmer down here. <laughs> up at the castle. So what do you think of Dover Castle, babe? It's stunning. I actually didn't know it was this big. Um, I kind of came in with expectations that it's going to be a lot like some of the other castles we've been to um, that are much smaller. So it's really cool to explore the grounds here and there's a lot of history. It's, it's a lot to take in and yeah. definitely a pleasure to do it. Now let's walk the battlements. Okay, now be careful. Something like that. So this would be it's the outer curtain wall. The castle that we know today began to take shape under Henry II during the 12th century and became possibly the largest castle in all of England. One of the reasons for Dover Castle's well-preserved state is that it maintained its role as an active military installment from the 12th century all the way up to the Cold War. While we didn't visit the famous Dover tunnels due to the pandemic, there is a complex underground system of tunnels that began to be dug all the way back during the Napoleonic War. During World War II, these tunnels were expanded and converted into an air raid center, hospital, and acted as the command center for naval operations on the English Channel. Okay, so we are now moving to leave Dover Castle, but we were just taking a look at the city right behind here. There's like picnic benches you can sit on um, that overlook the town of Dover and the ocean. It is so cool. So. This whole complex is absolutely massive. And if you come here when it's not the pandemic, like we're here right now, more tunnels are also open. So you need to give yourself probably an entire day at this whole complex because 
the grounds are stunning. The like, there's just so many places to take great photos. Walking Walk the, the battlements, going into the yeah. castle. We didn't even go into the castle. Yeah, we barely even went into any of the inside parts of the castle where you can learn a lot about the history. Just again, because of the pandemic and um, only having half of a day here. So the the cafe was also really good. We did stop and get like a pasty and a sausage roll for lunch and some coffees. Just coming to one place like this, you can get one to two months worth of like your fee. Benefit, yeah, yeah. We ended up doing that. This is our first day as English Heritage members, but we're going to be hopefully going to some of the other sites while we're here in the UK. So it'll be um, well used. Look at this though, like here's the information center um, that you want to stop at and get a map when you first park. Um, but and that is one thing, they do have parking here on premises, so they have three different parking lots. We're actually walking through the lower, but we're parked up in the middle. Yep. Um, the middle is the easiest to get access to the visitor center. Right. Um, but yeah, you can come straight onto premises, you kind of drive over a drawbridge, which is kind of cool. So cool. And, uh, <laughs> you drive through like a gate, a gate. yeah. And I mean, you feel like you're back in the medieval times. We're amazing. clearly total American. So this is a really, really fun activity if you're ever in the Dover area. Um, and it's especially a beautiful day out. So bring your family, come with friends, and just make a day of it. All right, we're going to head to the White Cliffs now. Cheers. Since I missed out on seeing Dover's famous White Cliffs with Derek at sunrise, we decided to drive back to St. Margaret's Bay in the afternoon. Despite the winding, narrow road down to the beach, we felt it was the perfect place to cap off our last day in Kent with its beautiful backdrop of chalky white cliffs, crashing waves, and colorful sheds. shower. <laughs> it just started raining and the sun came out like right at the same moment. So ideally a rainbow happens, but I guess worst case scenario is we go to the pub. Look how white they are over there now. Pub, I suppose is what it is, right outside of Dover at St. Margaret's Bay. Parking right now because it's October is free, so we went and took pictures of the white cliffs on either side of this bay, which were so beautiful, and this weather is truly a day for it. And then we decided to get a sharing platter from this pub, and so we have, thank you, 
We have the langostinos, but I've never eaten ones like these. <laughs> so I am in for a little bit of an adventure today, I think. And then we both got half pints because we have a bit of a drive ahead of us back to Portsmouth from here. But this has been such a beautiful day weather-wise. And I hope that I figure out how to eat these correctly. So that way I don't look like a fool over here. But uh, wish me luck. I might start with the chips. <laughs> Okay, so we are about to eat this platter and we just had our waitress kind of explain a little bit more about what the bread's used for and stuff. So what'd she say? And Derek's gonna go first. So I guess we snap the head off. It's got eyes. I know, it has eyes. <laughs> okay, head is off. Yep, okay, you got that part done. And I'm sorry to anybody who actually knows how to do this if we're doing it wrong. Um, just please forgive us. But this is this is attempt number one at doing this. So she said dip the bread into the garlic butter and then put the langoustine on top once you've kind of deshelled it. Which it looks like Derek's kind of using his lobster knowledge on this a bit. Ooh, but we don't have a lobster fork, do we? You got this. I have so much faith in you. Random question, do they have like meat in the claws like lobsters do? I don't know. Okay. If anybody knows, leave a comment. Oh, okay. You got some meat out there, that's for sure. I bet it's gonna be like so fresh and delicious. Okay. While Derek kind of finishes this up, I'm going to try my first one of these guys. What is this? It's a full fish. She literally said, just eat it. Eyes and all. Eyes and all. I don't know if I'm going to eat the eyes. Eat them. Okay, hold on. Here, take a video of me doing this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Throw the whole thing in. Just... Adventure is a wonderful thing. Okay. I can't eat that. Gotta do the head. Gotta do that. I'm not doing that head. No way. Okay, so what does it taste like? Um, it tastes like really fishy and salty. Um, I don't even know how to describe it otherwise. It just, that's how I would say, like, if you don't like fish, don't eat these. Um, I think they're like, like Yeah, yeah. Like, they're not bad. They're just like, they are a savory treat. Okay, let's get back to Derek's Bagostino. Look at those white cliffs over there, by the way. Like what? The ocean view. This is where to do this. We just don't know how. But don't ever let that stop you. It's getting messy over there. Did you have a bread yet? Okay. So I'm gonna have another one of these off camera, and I'm still not going to eat the head. She did it, she ate the head. No, I didn't, it's right there. Yeah. Man, these are salty. Okay, so these here are fried squid and fried shrimp. Or I guess fried prawns, probably. Hmm. Apparently shrimp is not in the UK, it's just prawns. I just ate a little bit of squid. Pretty yummy. Okay, Derek. How's it going? Okay. Crostini. Okay, dip, dip in, in the, the garlic oil. butter, she said. Ooh, you just stirred up that scent, that heavenly scent of garlic butter. How is it? Does it taste like regular shrimp? It tastes like lingustines. So, what do you think? More like a crab or lobster. Oh, cool. Texture wise? Yes. Yeah. Oh, God, he's going to eat the whole thing. All right, now I gotta try these langostinos, so. 
Hope you guys enjoyed this embarrassment of not knowing what to do and just a, a nice friendly try. Castle. Very busy. Road. I highly recommend driving through Kent for those who are up for a bit of adventure. The roads are generally in very good repair and not too difficult to navigate. This gives much greater freedom and flexibility to see all the sites on your list and not just those that are serviced by a bus or train route. If you are unfamiliar with driving in the UK, beware the single track roads that may require you to use the passing place to let oncoming traffic through. And don't forget to use your courtesy wave. So we are driving finally back from Dover to Portsmouth for the evening. Um, we definitely did not expect to spend so much time in Dover. Um, between the castle and the white cliffs and the beaches, there was just like so much to see that we had such an amazing time and we would absolutely go back. So I hope you guys really enjoyed seeing Dover with us through this video. And if you liked this video, definitely give it a thumbs up below and subscribe if you want to see more of our UK videos to come. All right, thanks everybody for watching with us. Cheers, happy travels. Hey travelers, don't forget to subscribe and let's hang out more. Here are some links to other helpful travel videos on my channel and press that notification bell so you don't miss any new and awesome travel videos to come.